welcome to this video. Now, this is going to be a different video than we're used to. This is a type of video I did like a long time ago and I just I just wanted to do it again. All right. So, now this should be recording my system. Uh anyways, so I I have recently discovered that the Five Nights sequel has come out and that's what we're going to be looking at today is the Defend the Dawn. And this book is not coming out until September 13th. But recently, I don't know when, I really don't know when, but recently Bloomsbury, the uh, publishers for this, uh, released a cover and a release date. So first things first, we are going to look at this cover. Uh, the cover here is uh, pretty blue. That <laughs> Defy the Night is a very purple cover and uh, there's, based off of what happens in here, there is quite a bit of symbolism. You have the palace and you've got like these little embers to resemble the fires that happen at the end of the book. Now, going back to Defend the Dawn, this cover speaks, and like they still have the moonflowers in here, at least I believe those are moonflowers. They look very similar to the ones in Defy the Night. But, so, I guess, just zoom in, make this very grainy. But, yeah, so it's got the moonflowers. However, this cover, first off, different palace, definitely different silhouette. Because I don't care what way you try and swing that, that cannot change. Like, that silhouette can never look like that silhouette. There's no chance in hell of that happening. So, different palace. Must be going to another kingdom. Uh, and it's surrounded by water. Kandala is not surrounded by water. I'm sorry, but that's just a fact. At least I don't think it is. Is it? I don't know. At least the palace isn't surrounded by water. The palace is surrounded by a bunch of different lands that uh, <laughs> a bunch of different people rule. And then they answer to the king. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, there, the fact that the cover's blue, I don't think is a mistake. Uh, and these bubbles here. Like, there are a lot of bubbles here. So, and then there's the ripples here to resemble water, oceans. So, I believe that there's, there's something to do with water. And I honestly believe that they're just going to be traveling over the water. Because there's also all, this, all these rocky bits. And you can sort of see more rock here and up here. I'm zoomed in a lot. Like, you can see the rocky edges here and here. I'm going to completely ignore <laughs> the Cassandra Clare quote here. But, yeah, like, the ripples that are going on here. Their water is going to be a very strong thing in this book. Now, mind you, I have not uh, read the description. <laughs> Because I wanted to do that with you guys and analyze the description because this is this is all I can do <laughs> until September thir 13th. Yeah, September 13th. This is all I can do is I can look at this and I can analyze it for what it is. But like, there's got to be something to do with like water <laughs> and I don't know, like another kingdom, like. This is, this is it. This is all I, I know. This is all I can theorize on uh, without having read the description. Like, water is just too strong of a theme on this cover for it not to be something that's going to happen. Like, I don't think uh, Tessa or Korok are going to have, like, water powers or anyone in the books are going to have water powers because 
it's just not how this how the how this world is built and so i'm not expecting that but i am expecting something to go to happen with this uh, other kingdom that we see here cuz this yeah this is no way in hell a part of Kandala. Like, this is not a Kandalan palace. Because, like, the Kandalan palace in uh, on the Defy the Night uh, cover here is also built on, like, a high point and, and stuff like that. Not at the base of water. Unless it's, like, being drowned or something like that. But also the silhouette does not look like the Kandalan palace here. So... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyways, let's get on to the description and let's analyze that. So, we're going to just read it all at once. So, here's the, the synopsis, if you will, of Defend the Dawn. To save their kingdom, they must embark on a dangerous journey. The kingdom of Kandala ne'er narrowly avoided catastrophe, but the embers of revolution still simmer. While King Harriston seeks a new way to lead, Tessa and Prince Korok attempt to foster unity between rebels and royals. But the consuls who control the Moonflower will not back down, and Korok realizes he must find a new source for the life-saving elixir. When an emissary from the neighboring kingdom of Ostriary arrives with an intriguing offer, Tessa and Korik set out on an uncertain journey as they attempt to mend their own fractured relationship. This could be their only chance to keep the peace and bring relief to the people of Kandala. But danger strikes during <laughs> the journey to Ostriary, and no one is who they seem to be. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so let's let's break this down. Uh, we're gonna go sentence by sentence. We're gonna ignore this one though, <laughs> and uh, this one because this how this uh, synopsis is written is very smart. Very smart. It gives you just enough without giving you anything. Just <laughs> and honestly, synopsises like book descriptions are hard to write. As someone who had to write my own, I've I've spent way too long on trying to keep it concise, short, and without giving away too much. It's hard. <laughs> um but the way this was done was very uh very smart cuz without without this line here, uh with just this, you have a fact, something that needs to happen, and that you would already know needs to happen. Another fact, right here, this, this whole thing is a fact. And, and uh, right here, an actual thing that happens, along with a fact is also in there with uh, attempting to mend their own fractured relationship. And then it's followed by like a small little tidbit of information. Like the only things that you would not know uh, after reading Defy the Night are uh, the fact that there's an emissary from a neighboring kingdom and that something happens on this journey when when Tessa and Korok set out for to try and like to go to Austria and like deal with this offer. Uh but like that is really the only thing in here that you would not know. Cause you know King Harrison, he wants to find a new way to lead. And Tessa and Korwick have to attempt to foster unity between rebels and royals. Otherwise, the rebels will try and overthrow uh, Harriston. So that's that's a given thing to happen. But, and like, the consuls who control Moonflower. Like, 
<laughs> Salister is a fucking dick. Of course he's going to do that. And I think it's Marpetta. Marpetta is just going to follow his lead. She doesn't care. Like She's just going to follow Alessander Salister's lead. And so there's nothing really that can be done here. So that's that's a fact and the fact that it takes this much for Cork to realize that he must find a new source for the moonflowers took me long enough. <laughs> but yeah, uh we're not really gonna analyze this this top half because there's like nothing there. Uh granted I do want to brainstorm maybe to uh something around here. But I'm not going to do that right now, for this video at least, because I want to keep this video pretty short. <laughs> when an emissary from the neighboring kingdom of Austria arrives with an intriguing offer, Tessa and Corrick set out on an uncertain journey as they attempt to mend their own fractured relationship. So this right here, this, beautifully written, uh, but a lot of information was given in here, but not too much. So, obviously, there's an emissary from Austria. Who is this emissary? We won't know until the book comes out. But I'm very... I don't remember Austria being named in Defy the Night. I could have been wrong. Because a lot happened in Defy the Night. But Austria... I don't think we've heard of it. And so... It's going to be interesting dealing with this other kingdom. What this offer is, this offer has to be something concerning the moonflowers and their need for them. Because uh, Kandala is just dying without them. So they're probably heading to Austria to see if this offer is like, is like legit. <laughs> Or if it's just, like, a problem. Or if, like, they can... They need to set up trade with the kingdom about over the moonflowers. So, yeah. Uh, so, this offer, we know nothing of. But I, I believe it has to be about the moonflowers. So, that's... So that's a start. That's a start. But it's not enough. <laughs> so. Um, but the fact that Tessa and Cork have to do this while they mend their own fractured relationship here. <laughs> that's going to be tough. That's tough normally. That's tough to do when you're not trying to save a kingdom from a disease while also having to like deal with this going to another kingdom and like doing whatever Austria wants in trade for the moonflowers. Who knows? But like <laughs> the fact that I have to do that along with all of that, it's gonna be tough. But you know what? I have faith in them because I, I need them to survive. I need I need their love to survive and thrive and uh, I just need it because I don't know what I would do without I don't I just don't know what I would do without them <laughs> I'm, uh together because uh even though I'm not huge into romance, I read fantasy books with romance in them. And I end up shipping characters. I'm not huge into reading romance, but it's the sole focus. But, like, because this isn't the sole focus, but it's still, like, prominent, I want I want them together. I really want this to be... to happen. <laughs> uh, I hope they do end up mending their own... their uh, relationship. I, I want them to. Because they belong together. And, like, the fact that Cork lied and was was less for a time. Like, just who cares? Like, just forgive the poor man. <laughs> Anyways, let's
let's go on to the last paragraph here before I start crying. Um, this could be their only chance to keep the peace and bring relief to the people of Kandala. Fact. Uh, but danger strikes during the journey to Austriari, and no one is who they seem to be. Now, this, this bit, this, this gives you all of the theory fodder. Um, danger strikes. What kind of danger? Uh, and I'm assuming maybe that their journey is on the sea, and that's why the, and that's why the cover here is so water-based. So their journey, I don't think, is on land. And it might be on sea, or it might be partially on land and partially on the sea. I don't know. <laughs> but that is something that I'm going to definitely think about. Uh, so danger strikes. Uh, what kind of danger? Who knows? We don't know. We will probably never know until September 13th. Damn it, I really, really want to come. <sighs> And then this last line here, and no one is who they seem to be. I think this is the uh, emissary from Australia, because that's, that is the only unknown that we have here. And like, we already know Korik, uh, his alias was Wes, and we know that, we know a that his parents were killed, so it's not going to be them. Uh, we we don't know anything about Austria, or if we do, I just forgot. Uh, but we don't know anything about it, and we don't know anything about the royals there, what they what they look like, or anything. We don't know shit, <laughs> and that's this is the thing going on here. That that's that's the problem we have here is. What's going to happen? Like, who is not who they seem to be? The only, like, the only thing I can think of is the uh, emissary from... So, yeah, the person that's been sent to Kandala for this uh, intriguing offer, they have to be the one that's not who they seem to be. But, like, is it good or is it bad? Because... <laughs> That can go in many different directions because you can have a good person that's like not who they seem to be. Like, they could seem to be, like, for instance, they could end up being one of the royals from Austria, and that's just, uh, they just wanted to do this on their own, but like, uh, no one knows what they look like, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so maybe it's a royal from. Austriary, and then they their identity gets revealed on the journey, or you know it could not be that. But that's that's the thing that comes to my brain first, and I really hope <laughs> I hope it's not that because that that is a really big cliche, and uh, I might judge Bridget Kemmerer for that. There's so much that could happen with that, but also this uh, emissary could also just be lying and they are actually bad and like in maybe Salister's pocket or something like that. Who knows? I don't. The book hasn't been released yet. So, yeah. This, this is just like, this video is just me rambling off my thoughts about this because I seriously have no idea what. Because this, this is a great synopsis. Because it tells you some things without telling you anything. And it's it's really good. I, I'm not great at writing my synopsis. At writing my descriptions. My first book's description is awful. Uh, my second book is a little better. But it's still bad. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm still working on it, even though I worked on it for several hours to get what it is now. So, yes, yeah, so defend the dawn. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to this. Because, like, oh, it's, 
I I love this world. I love this book. I and I'm so glad I found it. <laughs> but now I have to wait. Um <laughs> uh, but yeah, so survive and defend the dawn. Also I I love this uh cover artist. Uh let's see who because it's it's got to be the same cover artist for the second book as the uh, first. All right, so Jeanette Levi or Levy, something like that. So Jeanette Levy Levi, whatever. Uh, solid work on the covers here, and I'm so I like these covers are gorgeous, and I love them. They're just beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's that's really all my thoughts on this. And I just wanted to, like, go over this. Let's start the conversation of trying to figure out what the hell this book is about. And so I can be somewhat prepared for things if certain things happen. But I, I'm very emotional for these books because... I, I just, I love Defy the Night so much. I love the world. I love the characters. And, oh my god, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I just love everything about them. And, no. Oh. But, yeah. So, those are my thoughts. <laughs> my very scrambled and uh, unclear thoughts. But those are my thoughts. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> those are all my thoughts about this. Because, like, I don't know what else to say. Like, there's... Based off of the description and the cover, this is all I can say. <laughs> on this co on this cover, it's a spark of rebellion. It's all it takes to defy the night. And I swear there was a version of this. Large cover. Yeah, the, on here, it's really hard to see. Um, but a new alliance will arise to defend the dawn. There's got to be something going on. Like, that's also something to analyze, but I don't have the brain power to analyze it. I got home from work. I, I just finished, prior to this, I finished uh, recording my last layer of gesso on the canvas. Still drying over there. But, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's really all I have to say for this video uh, and on this. But just know I'm very excited for this and I will be reading it immediately once it comes out. So that is a promise that that is a book that I'm going to read immediately. However, I have to wait. I have to wait for my... Uh, my time for for September 13th to come around but uh yeah so um I hope you all enjoyed this video if you did give it a like if you want to see more content from me hit that subscribe button ring that notification bell and if you want to support me go buy my book links are in the description below and I will see you all in the next video bye bye